In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to harmonize non-chord tones. If you haven't watched the previous lessons, pause this now and go watch those first. They're short and they're fun, and this kind of builds on the stuff we covered before. Hi, I'm Elliot Deutsch, a professional composer and arranger from LA area. I make my bread and butter writing for big band, and I've got my own ensemble, the Pandemonium Big Band. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, you know, go take a listen. I look forward to t sharing these tips and tricks, and hopefully this can help you along your big band writing journey. In this lesson, I'm going to focus on three different techniques for harmonizing non-chord tones in your big band writing. The first one is using what we call diminished passing chords. I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, the second one are what we'll call diatonic passing chords. And the third one is what we call chromatic planing. Uh, all three of them are really important. I use all three in my big band writing, and I think if you can get these three down, you should be able to harmonize just about any good jazz line. What I'm not going to cover in this lesson is how to write a good jazz line. <laughs> I would love to cover that, but that is a broad topic, and I don't even know how to jump into it. A few sort of tips. Uh, first, listen to as much jazz music as possible. Uh, the way that I learned how to write jazz lines is simply by listening to tons of good jazz music in the style that you're trying to write. So if you're trying to write swing, listen to Count Basie, listen to Duke Ellington, uh, listen to Thad Jones, you know, whatever, whoever's doing what you want to do, listen to it as much as possible, and then you'll be able to emulate that style in your writing. If you're writing a jazz line, uh, you're going to want to have, a, it's going to have a combination of chord tones and passing tones, but generally the chord tones are going to land on strong beats. So that could either mean if you have a bunch of eighth notes having the chord tones on the beat, right? Um, but you could just easily do them off the beat. Uh, um, you definitely want to land on a chord tone. So either at the peak of your line, you go up to a chord tone and then come back down, or maybe it, it just goes up or goes down and then hits a chord tone. But whatever the last note that you hit on the line, better be a chord tone. Um, even if we harmonize using the techniques we're going to use in this lesson, it's not going to make it sound right if the line just isn't any good. All right, let's put that aside for a second. Let's talk about how to do non-chord tones. The first step is going to be to harmonize all of your chord tones. So we talked in the previous lessons about how to harmonize chord tones. Uh, do exactly that. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm harmonizing all the chord tones first and leaving the, uh, the notes that aren't in the chord <laughs> to do later. Once that's done, we're going to decide which type of... Uh, harmony we're going to use. Okay, so the simplest one is, th the simplest of these techniques to do is using what we call a diminished passing chord. So be cautious using this. I was taught that diminished passing chords were characteristic of early, early swing music. I'm talking, you know, 30s, 20s, 30s, 40s swing music. And that if you use this too much, it's not going to sound modern. Now I I don't know exactly what to say. As you'll you'll hear when we do when I play you the examples, it's they sound they all sound pretty similar. So you know, just let your let your ears be the guide as to which one you're going to use. But the uh, diminished passing chords are the simplest to do. So what you do is you take that non-chord tone and uh, harmonize by going down in minor thirds, and that's going to leave you with a diminished seven chord. Uh, for, for those of you that haven't thought about it yet, a diminished seven chord is constructed as a stack of minor thirds. So, for instance, C, E flat, G flat, and A. <laughs> I know that uh, A and G flat look like a second, but it, it is a, it, I mean, F sharp to A is a minor third. And then, you know, another minor third up from A is C again. So it, it loops around in a way that, that other um, chords don't. And for this reason, there's only three diminished uh, seven chords. <laughs> there's three of them. So there's the one that starts on C, there's a D flat chord, a D flat diminished chord, a D diminished chord, and once you get up to E flat, you're really just an inversion of the C diminished chord, right? So uh, they're really easy to construct, and, they, and it's very effective. 
uh, diminished chord, it, you know, by itself uh, sounds really, really tense. So since music is an exercise of tension and release, as long as you're not landing on a diminished chord, it's going to sound tense and then release to whatever the chord harmony is. So that's kind of why it works. All right, so I've written all of the passing uh, notes on this melody uh, with diminished harmony, and let's hear what it sounds like. All right, <laughs> sounds like swing music. Um, so let's talk about, I mean, the, the next two techniques kind of go hand in hand because I use them together so frequently. But the first one um, that we're going to talk about is what, what I refer to as a diatonic passing chord. So what I do is when I take a non-chord tone, um, what I'll do very frequently is choose a different chord that works in the key of the chord that we're on. So for instance, if we're in C major, um, I'll try to make my non-chord tones, uh, I'll harmonize them as a G7. So like if there's an F in the melody on a C major chord, I'll make that the seventh of a G7 and just voice it vertically. Um, and it'll sort of be a momentary G7 that's gonna resolve back to C. Um, sometimes it makes more sense to um, you to use like the minor two or the four chord or even the minor six chord and they're all gonna kind of sound fine um, but generally on a major chord I like to make it some sort of a five of that so again if you're in if the chord is C major I'll use some sort of G7 um, as my passing chord and then if the if it's minor I'll also do a five chord generally so for an A minor uh, I'll make the passing chord an E7 if we're on a dominant chord, like let's say we're on G7, uh, I'll make the passing chord the two of that, or the minor fifth, what, whatever you want to think about it. So a G7, I like to think about it, is a G7 is the five chord in the key of C, the two would be D minor. So I try to make the passing chords on my G7 chords D minor chords. Uh, this doesn't always work, as, as you'll see, you'll end up with with notes that aren't in G7 and aren't in D minor, in which case you have to make another decision. Chromatic planing. <laughs> you can probably figure out what it is from the, the name, but what you do is once you've harmonized your non-chord tones, if you have a note that, that it was a non-chord tone that goes chromatically to a chord tone, so for example, the end of the triplet um, in measure five, uh, it goes a half step up. It goes a half step up, a C sharp going up to D. So what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll harmonize the D, you know, I'll, I'll get all the, because that's the chord tone on the next chord, um, and then I'll backtrack and make all the notes move in the same way that the lead no note moves. So it's going a half step up, I'll make them all go a half step up. So I know that that makes it a momentary, really weird chord, but in, in, in reality, all the, the instruments are moving in parallel up to the correct chord, um, and it sounds, you know, correct. So that's chromatic planing. All right, so now I've reharmonized that same uh, piece of music that we previously had diminished passing chords. Now I've redone it with diatonic passing chords and chromatic passing chords, and let's see what it sounds like. And now just for fun, let's listen to it again with the diminished passing chords. Can you tell the difference? <laughs> I cannot tell the difference for the life of me. I, I've, the entire time I've been writing uh, big band music, I've avoided using diminished passing chords 
with much frequency because I was afraid of, that my music would sound old fashioned. And perhaps if we were at a slower tempo, you'd really be able to hear the difference. But at, at this medium swing, they basically sound the same. So um, there are of course some advantages as far as inner motion that happen when you do one or the other. So what I recommend is take all three of these techniques and sort of put them, think of them as, as tools in your toolbox. And when it's time to, for you to harmonize a line in your next big band chart, use all three of them. Use whichever one at each moment works the best. All right, if you got anything out of this video, I hope you did, please hit subscribe. Um, I'm planning on making a whole bunch more of these. There's a ton to talk about, and I look forward to sharing my knowledge with you. Um, definitely check out uh, my ensemble, the Pandemonium Big Band. We've been recording remotely through the entire pandemic, and um, <laughs> hopefully I'll see you live soon. All right, bye.